Greetings, Tennis Daniels here. Uh, I'm not proud of myself, or maybe I am. It took me much longer than it should have to install Python. I Python Dev 1.0. Let's take a look at it. It's got some really cool stuff. IPython, it should be default for every computer class, every uh, basic computer class. It's super powerful uh, for a learner. It's just really cool. It takes a little time, though, to get it installed. I'm running Linux Mint, and I want to run it on Python 3 and not Python 2x. So here's my environment. I'm running 2.73 and 3.23. I'm running easy install. This is very important, and you should have it running. Um, and yeah, I've already mentioned that I want to run Python using Python 3. Uh, some sanity checks. Uh, make sure you have easy install installed. Uh, make sure you've got the Python 3 dev installed, the GCC, oops, the GCC stuff installed. Uh, Python pip installed, and I installed uh, IPython th 3, or I'm sorry, IPython dev from git, which was pretty straightforward. I created a directory, or actually I just cd'd into uh, user local source, and then I cloned it, git clone, and cd IPython, and then I built it. That was pretty straightforward. Uh, to run IPython, let's take a look at that. Uh, to run it, you just type by Python, and there it is, IPython 3, and it starts nice and easy, and uh, Control D to end it. You can see right there it's running 3.23. Control D, yes, yeah, so I would end. All right, now, um, so it does work following those, um, following those instructions. That's pretty straightforward. Now for the notebook, which is the super coolness. Uh, you have to use this. Uh, don't mess with it because it works. And once you've got that working, you want to CD into the notebook folder. Let me change that font. Um, and here's a little, oops. Here's a little note for you. Um, easier to start this way is it will open all the notebooks and you can start playing and learning immediately. So let's do that. Actually, we should, if you're following along as closely, you should be able to do that. LS, and you will have all of the IPython notebooks running, or sorry, not running, but ready for use. And now type IPython 3, and you can't tab to notebook. So you have to type it out, and hopefully it works. Let's see if it works. Let's see if it works, and it works. So now uh, we've opened up the new browser window, new browser tab. I'm using Chrome for this, and part one, running code. So we're going to take a look at that. Running code in the IPython notebook, first and foremost, is an interactive environment for writing and running Python code. And it looks like the CSS is pretty good because I'm able to zoom in pretty tight, which is nice, uh, especially if you're wearing glasses like I am. And let's give, um, so run a code cell using shift, enter, or press the play button in the toolbar above. Here's the play button. I pressed it. So presumably something happened here. Uh, we'll try shift enter. That's not going to, oh, look at that. Name A is not defined. All right, so shift A. And now if I shift enter, it should work. Well, OK, so it did work. Print A. And now let's shift enter there. Uh, OK.
This will crash the equivalent calls. No, I don't want to crash it. All right, so here are two system aliases, and there's lots to learn here. Um, let's see. We'll try this. Um, ls shift enter, and it pulls up all the stuff that we can that's in that directory, which is pretty cool. Uh, it's so cool, in fact. Let's go ahead and show you a little bit about how that does work. I should be able to start up another instance, and I can. So let's ls, and you can see um, the ls here is the same as the ls here. Now, uh, I'm not going to uh, walk you through the entire tutorial, but uh, the notebooks are very, uh, very interesting and informative, and I hope this document helps save someone some time because I spent way too long trying to get this to work. Um, this was perhaps the most important piece uh, to get everything working as it was supposed to work. Keep that in mind. Thanks for watching and happy computing.